Good morning. And whether you're watching online, you're here in the sanctuary, welcome to our service on Palm Sunday at Northwest Barry United Church. It's an absolutely gorgeous spring day outside, and there's going to be a lot going on inside too. After the service, please join for a time of fellowship and refreshments in West Tenniel Hall. We're going to begin the service with our gathering song, at which time the children will be processing through the aisles. So this will be interesting. We're going to sing two verses, then we're going to greet, then we'll sing the last verse, but we're going to give them a little music at first so they can get going on their procession.
Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service. I love Palm Sunday, and it's a beautiful day. We get to wave our palm branches. I get to wear my dress. It's all a great day. So, um, so glad you're joining us. To all those watching from home, we're so glad you're joining us here as well. It is a very special day. As today we really begin our journey to uh, Easter Sunday. As always, we like to begin by saying welcome to anybody who's visiting, or if you're celebrating this week. Please share with us what you are celebrating, so we can celebrate with you. Mrs. LaSalle. Good morning. The lady beside me is visiting Curl, Nova Scotia. Her name is Nancy. Nancy from Nova Scotia. Welcome. <laughs> Jen. I'm excited to have my friend here, and it's his first time at our church. Dan, welcome. We're happy to have you with us. Nice to have Don Dorothy back from, the, from, from Florida. Happy to have you here again. Well, I have something I want to share. As, as we speak this morning, or almost as we speak this morning, my son uh, over in Kingston is getting his iron ring for, uh, for engineering. So he's graduating. And... So he yeah, starts a job in Toronto this, uh, this year. So really yeah, proud of him. Anybody else? Doreen. Yes, my friend Heather is one year cancer free. Heather is one year cancer free. That's great to hear. Congrats, congratulations. Well, I know we have a, a big service and we've got uh, a few announcements for things that are coming up, so I'd like to invite those who have them to please come forward. Good morning. I am here this morning to highlight an announcement that has been on the screen and in Northwest News for the past few weeks. Northwest Berry is sponsoring a speaker series called Health, Happiness, Harmony. This is a five-part series on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. beginning on April the 10th. There is quite a variety among the speakers which are highlighted in Northwest News. So please come out to hear some positive approaches to working towards health, happiness, and harmony. There will be an opportunity for a free will offering and refreshments will follow each event. Please join us on Wednesday evenings beginning April 10th for a chance to learn and then to share in fellowship and conversation afterwards. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. How can I top what just Barb said? Anyway, so I have two announcements. One, um, this is for the people that are 55 plus who play bid euchre. Uh, tomorrow we won't be having bid euchre or Easter Monday, but we will start up again on the 8th of April. Second announcement, afterwards in West Daniel Hall, I'll be selling tickets for the progressive euchre, $10, just see me in the back, on the table, by myself, <laughs> being humble. $10 for the tickets. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple, a few announcements here, so I'll go through them as quickly as I can. Uh, of course, next Sunday, uh, we have our Easter services. Um, so 10.30 on Good Friday here. Easter sunrise service at 7 a.m. and that's down at Heritage Park on the waterfront. And then our Easter service at 10.30 a.m. next Sunday. And as I mentioned last week, we're having the Festival of Chocolate after the service. So if you can bring something that is chocolatey to share, uh, we would love for you to add it to our table and we can all just have a great feast after our, our service. Uh, next Saturday, we're having an Easter egg hunt for our kids. That's at 7 p.m. Um, Sharon, who's not here today, asked me to really emphasize if you could please sign up on the sheet in West Daniel Hall or email hers to let her know that uh, you're going to be taking part. That's next Saturday at 7. The chocolate bar fundraiser for our youth group continues. Uh, thank you for everybody who, who basically, we basically sold out last week, so uh, we got some more. So if you'd like to buy a uh, chocolate bar, um, they're in the back. They're being sold for $3 and $5, depending on the size. And uh, apparently we've added dark chocolate. So for all you people who have a screw loose, you can go and get dark chocolate. <laughs> it's 
Sorry, I just don't get the dark chocolate thing, but I know it's good for you. Um, also, uh, a new members. Uh, at the end of April, April 28th, we're having our new members Sunday. Um, and if you're interested in joining the church officially, we'd love to have you do so. We have a breakfast in the morning, and then we have our, our ceremony during the service. So please email me or talk to me if you're interested in uh, joining the church. Finally, as many of you know, through Northwest News, we lost a couple of uh, our very valued members here at Northwest the past few days. And uh, the funerals for both of these gentlemen are next week. So tomorrow, uh, here at 1 p.m., uh, is our service to honor the life of Peter Bergerson. Uh, visitation is from 10 to 11.30. And then on Wednesday, we'll be remembering Bob Kitsetri. And that's, uh, that's yeah, this Wednesday, the 27th, and that's 11 o'clock. And that's going to be at Steckley Gooder Funeral Home with visitation from 10 to 11. And both of those gentlemen, as you know, have been a big part of our congregation. We will certainly miss both of them and uh, our prayers are with uh, their families. Let's begin our service now with our call to worship. Believe it or not, spring came to Barry this week. So in that spirit, let us begin. In the spirit of springtime, we raise our palms and flowers in grateful praise. We celebrate God's beautiful creation. With gratitude. For our creation and for our creator, we sing songs of praise and thanksgiving. No matter our location, we join together for worship on this Palm Sunday. Our opening hymn, 124, He Came Riding on a Donkey. Great uh, Palm Sunday hymn. Let us stand and sing together.
please be seated. And please join me in our opening prayer as it's found on the screen. Let us offer these words together and let us pray. Glorious God, this is the day that you have made. Whether we are here in person or watching from our homes, our cottages, our kitchens or our porches, we proudly wave our palms today and with excited voices welcome you into our midst. Today we remember Jesus, who chose courage over comfort, hope over despair, love over complacency. May the words, music, and prayers of worship inspire us to choose the same path that we may add light to the world around us. With Hosanna on our lips and joy in our hearts, let us worship. Amen. Thank you to our choir, thank you to our kids and our youth, that was really amazing. And I'd like to invite the, well you're already up here, but if there's any other kids who'd like to join us, <coughs> excuse me, we'd love to have you. While they're making their way here, I just did forget to make an announcement to those watching us online. We are going to be celebrating communion. We still would love you to take part, so you've got a little bit of time to gather up some bread and juice and uh, join us for that time. That's true. That's why we have grape juice. 
Well, good morning, everybody. That was really good. I love that. It was a really nice song. How's everybody doing? Anybody have anything they want to share? Uh, Sir. I just want to mention that me and my dad just saw you on the road. Yeah, I passed you on the road. You and your dad were out and about, and so was I. Anybody else? Well, I want to talk a little bit about what today is all about, because I remember when I was uh, around some of your ages, I was young, and I went to church, um, and Palm Sunday would come along, and I would always think it's got to be just about the weirdest day of the year. You arrive at church, somebody puts a piece of a branch in your hand and tells you to walk around the church waving the branch, and everybody's singing, and I'm like, what is going on? What is this really all about? So I thought for a moment I would talk about what Palm Sunday is. So I'm going to do it very, very quickly, very briefly, but hopefully kind of get to the idea of what this day is about. So the person that we follow here is who? Jesus, right? He lived a long time ago, like 2,000 years ago, and he was, he was a teacher. And he would walk around, and he would teach people about how to live the best life that they could. And the stuff he taught was so important and so good that even today, 2,000 years ago, we still follow him. That's why we, get, that's why we gather here on Sunday to learn about the things that he taught us about how to live our lives. So what happens is when you're a really good teacher is a lot of people will follow you. And a lot of people follow Jesus. And in his life, he helped hundreds, if not thousands of people. So the story goes, he gets to Jerusalem. And the reason he's at Jerusalem, which is a big city, is they're celebrating something called Passover, which was kind of like Christmas for people back then. It was like their big celebration of the year. And you know how on Christmas, everybody, we, the church is always full on Christmas if you're here because everybody comes out for Christmas. Everybody came out for Passover. So everybody was gathered. There were hundreds, if not thousands of people gathered at what was called the temple, which is kind of like the church back then, were gathered there. And Jesus arrives outside the city, and he's sitting up top of the city because it was kind of in a bit of a valley. And he looks down, and he sees all these hundreds of people. And they see him, and they're like, Jesus is here. This is so exciting. Jesus is here. So Jesus' friends say to him, you know, we're going to go down there. There's going to be a lot of people. Maybe you need to, to, to elevate yourself a little bit. So Jesus went on the back of a donkey, and down he went into the city. And people were just so excited that he was there. So what they would do is they took palm branches off the trees, and they would wave them, and they would put them at the, at the feet so that the donkey would ride over them. It was a sign of love and a sign of respect. It was a sign of how important Jesus was to those people. So that's why we celebrate Palm Sunday today. We're reminded of how important Jesus was and how important he still is with all the things he taught us. So I thought to myself, what are the most important things Jesus taught us? And I bet if I asked everybody here, we'd have lots of answers. But I, I'm the one with the microphone, so I get to decide. <laughs> so I was thinking palm branches, palm of your hand, five fingers, four fingers on a thumb, but let's say five fingers. Um, so what were the five most important things that Jesus taught? Um, so why don't you hold up your hand. Doug, just, you listen and see if you, I come up with the one that you're thinking of, okay? So, number one, be kind. Be kind, be kind, be kind, be kind. The most important, I don't think there's anything more important in the world than being kind, kind to each other. You guys are kind, right? When you are kind to somebody, you make that person feel better. When you are kind to somebody, you make yourself feel better. Let me give you an example. This last week, we had a little bit of snow, right, and ice. I came out to my car super early in the morning to come to church, and I had ice on my windshield, and I don't have a scraper because I lost it, long story. But anyway, I didn't have a scraper, so I sat in my car and waited for the ice to melt. The guy beside me who was scraping his car saw me sitting in there, and he came over, and he scraped my window, just scraped my window for me, right? That's kindness. Those things count for a lot. Secondly, I got the wrong sheet. Excuse me. <laughs> Classic Phil. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Secondly, be kind. How can I expect you guys to remember them if I can't remember? Number two, be inclusive. Does anybody know what that means? That's a big word. Nancy. It means like if you're playing a game and like somebody's like asking you like, That's a great, great answer. So Nancy said if somebody you're playing a game and somebody maybe isn't involved, that you include that person. Inclusive, being inclusive means including people around you. One of the worst feelings in the world is to feel left out. And you guys know what that feels like. You've probably been left out of something. Maybe there's a party and you don't get invited or your friends don't invite you to take part in a game that they're doing. It feels rotten, right? 
So I always think Jesus taught us about being inclusive. He was really good at noticing who was maybe not being included and making sure that they were invited into that, into that circle. So the challenge is every time that you're maybe having a game or a party, think about who would love to be here that might normally not be here. So be kind, be inclusive. Number three, be forgiving. It's another big thing Jesus taught. Everybody makes mistakes. Do you guys make mistakes? Yes. yes. Did you make a mistake even this morning? Yeah, probably. We all make mistakes. We all have to give each other a break and give ourselves a break. Another example, last week I went to the gym and uh, I was running late and I got to the gym and I had my gym stuff on and uh, everybody's looking at me kind of funny. And then finally the, the coach comes over and she said, and this is what she said, she goes, dude. She goes, she goes dude. She goes, dude, your shirt's on inside out. And I had my shirt on inside out. My tag was hanging out. and I was so embarrassed, right, that my shirt was on inside out. But is it a big deal? No, you just change it, put it back. So be forgiving of yourself. We all make mistakes and forgiving of others. Number four, be leaving yourself, right? Be leaving yourself. Jesus was always making sure that people knew their gifts. One of the lines that he said was, let your light shine. Don't hide your light. And when you are sharing your gifts and talents, even your personality, even the acts of kindness, you are letting your light shine. But to do that, you have to believe that you've got something to offer. Every single one of you has something good to offer those people around you. Believe in yourself. And finally, be involved. One of the things I love about Jesus when I read is that he just got involved everywhere he went. If he was walking along and he saw a group of kids playing, he'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go hang out with them a little bit. If he saw somebody that was sick, he would be like, I'm going to go see if I can help that person. If he saw someone who was lonely, he would say, I'm going to make that person feel included. He got involved in life at every part of life. He didn't just hold back and wait for things to happen or watch things. He got involved. And that's a great lesson for us as well, is to get involved in things as much as we can. Okay, let's review. What's the first one? Be kind. Second one? Be inclusive. Third one? Dougie. Be forgiven. You got it. Fourth one. Believe in yourself. And number five, Ben. Be inclusive is number two. You got that. Number five, Aubrey. Be involved. Excellent. So see if you can remember those things for Palm Sunday. I hope you now know why you were waving those palms this morning. And thank you for doing it with so much enthusiasm. Okay. Uh, Lori's not here today, but um, Jen is going to help. It's going to Take care of things back there. So you're going to go for a short Sunday school time. Then you're going to come back in here and join us for communion. Thanks, everyone. All you have to do, all you have to do when, a, when, you, when you're playing a sport is to believe in yourself. Right on. Right on. Let us now continue to worship God as we present and dedicate our morning offering.
probably know in the Palm Sunday story that riding into Jerusalem was an act of faith. It was also an act of courage. Every time we give is an act of courage as we never know where our gifts are going to go, but we trust in faith that they make their way to where they need to be, that they continue to bring light and hope to those who receive them. May you bless these gifts and those who give them in your name. Amen. Just a short reflection today for Palm Sunday as we're going to be uh, celebrating communion in a few minutes. But uh, let me begin by reading for you the Palm Sunday story. It's found in all four of the Gospels, so I'm reading today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. When they are approaching Jerusalem near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying that colt? They told them that Jesus had said, what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they'd cut from the trees. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. Amen. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our light. Amen. A couple years ago, there was a song on the radio by a singer called Skylar Gray called Coming Home. And the chorus of the song went like this. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. I don't need to tell you this, but there is truly no feeling like that of coming home. Especially after a long journey, opening that door of your home for the first time after sitting in your car or on a plane maybe for hours. There's the old familiar smell a little musty, but still there. They're seeing your stuff again, your favorite comfortable chair, your TV positioned just so. There's your bed, your wonderful, warm, comfortable bed, not too hard, not too soft, just about right. There's the sound of the clock in the corner as it ticks away the minutes and the hours. There's the familiar hum of the fridge, your fridge. You can almost feel your body relax. And you always say to yourself, whether out loud or whether to yourself, it's so nice to be home. Maya Angelou once wrote, the ache for home lives in all of us, the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. Lent has been described by more than one theologian as a journey home, a journey that's taken us through the wilderness of uncertainty and fear. And now we come to Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem, immersing himself in the love of the crowd, I couldn't help but think that it was a bit of a homecoming. You know, so often we think of place as home as a place, a building or a structure, but of course I don't need to tell you this either, that home is more than that. The building is always secondary. Home are people. They're the people that have stood by you. They are the familiar faces of those that you laugh with, the people you share your stories with, people with whom you can be completely yourself. A writer named Sarah Dessan in a book called What Happened to Goodbye describes it this way. Home wasn't a set house or a single town on a map. It was wherever the people who loved you were, whenever you were together, not a place but a moment and then another, building on each other like bricks to create a solid shelter 
that you take with you for your entire life, wherever you may go. If I were to ask you today, not what is home to you, but who is home to you, who would you say? What faces come to your mind? When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, days before he would be crucified, he wasn't actually coming home. His home was in Galilee, where he was raised far north of Jerusalem. But so much of his ministry and his work took place around that city. And as you look back into that cheering crowd of hundreds of people, I always wonder who was looking back. Remember the woman he saved from being stoned to death? I wonder if she was there, glowing with possibility of new life that Jesus had given to her. How about Zacchaeus, the tax collector, that Jesus called out of the tree and into a new life? Was he there? grinning at Jesus, thinking, there's the first person who ever saw my value as a person, the first person to believe in me. Was the centurion there, maybe standing guard at the side of the road, the one who that time had no business asking Jesus to help his friend, and yet Jesus helped him without question? Was he there, brimming with respect for the humble teacher on the back of the donkey? Jesus came home to Jerusalem, because he came home into the hearts of the people who truly mattered in his life. Galilee may have been his physical home, but Jerusalem was his spiritual home. Home is so much more than the structure that houses our bodies. It's the people that house our spirits. It's the people in whose presence we can be ourselves and be whom we were created to be. In just a few short days, the craziness of the Easter weekend will begin. And by craziness, I mean in terms of the story itself. In the next few days, a lot is going to happen. We are going to go from light into darkness. We will hear about a cross and a painful death. We will hear the agony of betrayal and feel the unmistakable clutch of fear and injustice in our hearts. The Good Friday story is not for the faint of heart. But then we will wait And Easter Sunday will come, and a hint of light will emerge on the horizon. And we will know something special is going to happen again. As the darkness releases its grip at the break of dawn, it's going to be a wild weekend. But today is a day to think about home. Take a wander down the main street of your life. Who is peering back at you from the crowd of all the people that you have met or have ever known? Who stands out as having touched your life profoundly? Who is home to you? Is it a spouse or a partner who embodies unconditional love? A friend who gives the best hugs or the best advice or just holds space for you when you need them? Is it a child who shows you the joy of simplicity or a sibling who's always been there and always will? Is it a teacher who inspired you? A coach or colleague that always believed in you? On your road of life, life, who stands out? Who's waving palm branches and cheering for you? Those people, folks, they're your home. And they're a reminder that God draws nearest to us in the bonds of love that draw us near to each other. There's no place like home. You know, I don't know a story better that brings together this image of home as both place and people than a very touching story, true story, about a young boy named John Todd who lived over 100 years ago. I've shared this story in the past. It's a great story. John Todd had a great deal of misfortune in his life. When he was young, before he was 10 years old, he lost both of his parents. He was told he was going to be living with his aunt, a woman he'd never met and who knew nothing about him. His aunt lived a long way away. This, of course, was the days before cars. So the aunt sent a horse and buggy to his house, which was driven by a neighbor called William. William was a man of few words. And as the boy climbed into his carriage, not knowing where he was going, he was so nervous that he was trembling. All along the ride, the young boy nervously asked questions of the driver. What kind of person was his aunt? Would he be happy living there? William tried to reassure the boy that he had nothing to worry about. But worry he did, because that's what little boys do. As they drew closer, it became nightfall. 
and the boy started to worry that perhaps by the time he got to his new home, his aunt would be asleep in bed. William said that he needn't worry. He could always tell if the, his aunt was up because she left a candle burning in her window. The final part of their journey was through the wilderness of the trees. Finally, they emerged through the trees, and there was the house that the boy was going to call home. And sure enough, burning in the window was a candle. The young boy cautiously climbed down from the buggy and made his way to the door. The door opened, and there stood his aunt. She gave him a big hug, told him that he was home. She then went inside, and while he settled, she made him a hot dinner, the first he'd had in a long time. She then showed him to his room, made sure he felt comfortable, and before saying good night, she said his prayers with him and tucked him in. He was home because he was loved. That young boy would grow up to become a minister, one of the great ministers of the early 20th century, Reverend John Todd. He moved to another part of the country, and for many years he no longer saw his aunt. But one day he received a letter from her, telling him that she was sick, she was dying, and that she was scared. I want to share the letter that he wrote back to her. This is his words. My dear aunt, Years ago, I left the house of pain, not knowing where I was to go, whether anyone cared, whether it was the end for me. The ride was long, but your friend encouraged me. Finally, he pointed out your candle to me, and there we were in the yard, and you embraced me and took me by the hand to the room that you made up for me. After all these years, I still can't believe how you did all of that for me. I was expected. I felt safe and welcomed and loved. Now it's your turn to go. And as one who's tried it out, I'm writing to let you know that someone is waiting up for you. Your room is all ready. The light is on. The door is open. And as you ride into the yard, don't worry. You are expected. I know. For I once saw God standing in your doorway long ago. The story of Palm Sunday is the story of Jesus coming home. Not to his place, but to his people. As he made his way through the crowd, I like to think they were all there. The ones he taught, the ones he'd inspired, the ones he'd healed, the ones he had forgiven. The ones he had seen, the ones he'd embraced, the ones he'd included, the ones that he had loved. All there, his people. For where there is love, there is God. And where there is God, there is home. Amen. Let us pray. God of the journey, as we reflect on this Palm Sunday story, we remember the courage it takes to confront the challenges of life, to ride into places where we may be uncomfortable or into new things that can seem so unknown. We worry sometimes about what people will think, what their reaction may be. May we always find that inner courage and strength to be bold when we're called to be bold, to be assertive when we need to be assertive. And may we trust in the people around us, the ones in our lives who are always there for us, the people we call home. Whether they cheer loudly or quietly, may we know that their presence is a gift May we give thanks for the role they play in our lives. And may we trust in your presence with us too, a grace that will not let us go. As we enter this, the holiest week of the year, may we take some time for reflection. May we take time to consider the areas in our lives that need new life or a fresh perspective. May we have the courage to let go of things we need to let go of to leave at the cross that which is holding us back and with faith embrace the possibilities of a new beginning. Bless and keep us on this special day and bless and keep our friends and our loved ones whom we name to you now in silent prayer. God, hear our prayers. And now as we prepare to share the sacrament of communion, may we do so with an honest and a sincere heart and with hope and faith 
in the promise of the Easter Sunday that is coming. Amen. So just before we have our communion hymn, just a few notes. I know some of you have been having communion here forever and some are maybe brand new. In our tradition here, everybody's invited to take part in communion, whether you're a member or not, whether you're young or old and somewhere in between, all are welcome. Um, that also means that you're welcome not to take communion. If you'd rather not, you please don't feel that you have to come forward. What we're going to do is after the liturgy, we're going to invite people to come from the back, start from the back to the front. We ask you to walk down the center aisles, take a little piece of bread and a little glass, and then return to your seats on the side aisles. Once everybody has been served, then we'll take communion together. Uh, if you aren't able to come forward, please just, uh, I'll be standing at the front, just give me a nod, I'll look around and we will bring communion to you. And for those of you who uh, prefer uh, or need gluten bread, we do have gluten-free, sorry, gluten-free bread. We do have gluten-free over on this side, if you'd like that as well. I'd just like to say thanks to the worship team, especially to Deb and Kathy for preparing the communion elements for us today. And if somebody, while we're singing, can invite the kids to come back in, that would be great as well. Let's sing our communion hymn now, which is 480, Let Us Break Bread Together. Please be seated. And I invite you to follow along with the liturgy on the screen. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our God of new life. We thank you, God of love, for the joy and celebration of this day. We thank you for the gift of spring and for the promise of new life and new birth. We thank you for all that lightens our life's journey, for laughter, family, faith, service, and joy. Especially today, we thank you for Jesus, who came among us to walk a journey of purpose, grace, and love. On this Palm Sunday, we remember the life of Jesus, who as he neared, his life neared, entered into Jerusalem, humble and riding on a donkey and in so doing showed us the path of faith, a path of humility, love, and service. When the palm branches had stopped waving, when the crowd had stopped cheering, we remember how Jesus went with his friends to a quiet room where they would eat one final meal and share one final promise. In the upper room with his friends, Jesus broke a loaf of bread and shared a cup of wine and spoke of his death on the cross. In those sacred moments of sharing and caring, Jesus showed us that faith is about courage, sacrifice, and a willingness to be counted. He also showed us that faith is about embracing life while we have it, caring for one another, especially in their darkest times. And Jesus promised that even death could not stop the hope that new life can bloom again. Today we share this bread as a community of Christ. We share this bread as the people of Northwest Barrie, 
and with our community that is online. And we pledge our commitment again to love and care for each other, to work for justice and dignity for all, to seek goodness and joy, to love and serve you, our God, and to strive to make our world a better place. the bread that is broken for you. As Jesus gave his life in sacrificial love, may we be ready and willing to love with our entire selves, bringing healing to what is broken and unity to what is fractured. And the cup that is poured out for you. Jesus promises us a new way, a new covenant. May this cup represent the plentiful grace of God shared for each of us giving us strength for the journey. As a family gathers at the table, let us as a family of faith gather at this table and share this food of grace as we celebrate God's presence with us always. Amen. I'd like to invite the servers to please come forward. It's over there, Linda. Thanks, man. Starting from the back, I invite you to please come forward.
the body that is broken for you. May you eat this now. The cup of grace, the cup of love, the cup of new life. May you drink this now. Please join me now in our closing prayer. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us courage to speak faith and act love, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope even in the midst of whatever challenges we face. Wrap your hopeful, healing presence around all of us today as we now carry your message of love and justice to our homes, our communities, and our world. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 481, sent forth by God's blessing. Let us stand and sing together. Mm -hmm.